Hello, my name is Justin Hudspeth. I'm a project manager with DTS, and today we're going to talk about the Xmedius web portal. This is the access to the Enterprise Fact server, and if you're watching this training, you are part of a team that is moving to this technology. So let's get started. The web portal that we've landed on is facts.utah.gov, and you're going to see this splash page. The username and password that you're going to use will have been provided to you as part of the migration from the legacy fax solution to the more modern enterprise fax server. Once you've logged in, you'll see it resembles an email inbox. The four parts of this portal that we're going to cover today are the inbound history, the outbound history, the outgoing queue, and your contacts. So we're going to start with what uh, most of you guys will use this for is uh, in and outbound faxing. So in the inbound history section, where you're going to see I have three faxes that have been sent to me. So if I open one up, we will see in a PDF form the document that was uh, sent to me. You'll see the caller ID of the person who sent the fax to you, as well as the time, date, and number of pages that this fax contains. In the Properties tab, we will get a little bit more information about the call itself. So you'll see the caller ID of the person who sent you the fax, who they sent it to, as well as um, time, date, number of pages. If we hit this button right here to download, it will pop open the facts in a new tab and it will allow you to do what you'd normally do uh, with a file that you've opened up in your browser. So we can print it to our uh, printer, we can download it to put you know, in our business tools. The inbound history is a complete list of all the, the ones that have been received and you manage them uh, just like you would an email. So if we need to delete them or mark them as unviewed so that the next person responsible for checking those can view them. The outbound history is like your sent folder in your Gmail. So you can see here is one that I sent earlier today as a test in preparation for this video and we sent it to my good friend Leon. So if we open up this fax, we can see that we have a cover page with from me to Leon, met metadata about the call itself, as well as our cover page information, and then the document that I attached. We also get the same properties where you can see the status of the outbound fax, so we can see that it's sent. We can see how long it took to send the number that we sent it to, and the time date, as well as the number of pages that we sent it to. So I'm going to actually compose a new outbound fax, because I want to show you what it looks like in this outgoing queue section. So if we go to hit Compose Fax, which is the bright blue button at the top left, we're going to go ahead and begin typing. So I'm going to go ahead and send a fax to Brienne, and as you can see, as I type her name, because she's my contact, her contact information pops right up. So it pre-populates her fax number, uh, the company that I've added to her, and we're going to go ahead and complete the fax by just filling out these forms. We're going to say training. Ignore this fax. So this is everything to do with the cover sheet. I'm going to go ahead and attach a file by, ch by clicking this button right here, choose file. And I have my document right here, testfax.docx. So the only other thing to do uh, for outbound facts, should I want to, is change sender or company information. So if you need to amend the information about your user account for a specific fax, you would check this radio button right here that says use custom sender and company information, and you can amend this to say what you need it to say. So if you are um, sending a fax on behalf of a group or you are sending to somebody who you do not wish to have personal identifying information, you just remove the fields. 
So if all I want to send them is the fax machine, or if all I really want to say is that it's coming from the state of Utah, that's how you would um, do that. So we're going to have go, so I'm going to just double check everything. I've got the document I want to send. I've got the right phone number and I'm going to go ahead and hit submit. So what you're going to see next is a, is a, a submission. So we, it's queued for delivery. So really quick, I'm going to go out to the outgoing queue so we don't miss it, but we can see we've got our training test in a sending state. So if I open up this in the outgoing queue section, we're going to see exactly what we sent. So state of Utah, we don't have any personal information right here ex except the number we're going from. I've got date and time information, number of pages, and this is everything I typed in the cover sheet information. The document that we're faxing is right um, after the cover page. And if we go to properties, we can see that it, we are still in a, a ascending status. So it's still on its first attempt. It will try four times uh, and, and have you retry it after that. It generally takes about a minute per page to send a fax. So it's the same rate as the traditional fax machines. It just has to do with how um, modems work. So we're going to take a look uh, back at the outgoing queue to see our status here and you can see it's gone. That's good. You don't want things to be in this queue. So if I go to our outbound history section, right where we saw our test facts, you could see it's right here, 11.44 a.m., which is the time of this recording. So we open it up. We're going to go ahead and see exactly what we saw in the outgoing queue as far as the cover page and document. But in the property section, we can now see that this says sent. So we're golden with this fax. That is our confirmation. We can see date and time of completion. We can see how long it actually took uh, to transmit. Um, and if this would be a, uh, we can also download it if we'd like, so we can get that confirmation there. So last thing I want to talk about is our contacts. You can see I've got two contacts in here. We've got Brianne, who I just sent the fax to, and I've got Leon. If you want to add or remove them, you do it from this window. So if we can go and add a coworker of mine named Brian. So Brian and I work uh, really close together, so I communicate with him a lot. So I'm just going to type in his name, the company that I want to show in our faxes, and a fax number. That's just one I made up. So I hit apply, and now he's there. If you need to remove one, you select it and hit delete. And we can maintain our context from there. All right, it looks like I actually just got a new fax and it's, I got it, it looks like it's from Brian. So let's take a look at what she faxed me. So this is... Oh, that was, I, I'm, I'm silly. This was because we marked it as um, unviewed. So we'll go ahead and change it. I got excited there. I thought we got a live test fax. Um, you can see it's from January 16th, though, so from, from a while ago. That is it. I promised you it was going to be easy, and we're done with the whole product in less than 10 minutes. There are uh, uh, other, other flavors of how we are deploying the Enterprise Fax server, such as direct to email, to network file shares, to printers. So this uh, video is only goes over the web portal. But I promise you, any of the other options is even easier than this web portal. If you have any questions, please have your admin reach out to your voice, voice solutions engineer. Or if you uh, have a problem while in production it's not working, let's call the help desk and get you in contact with voice operations. But it's been my pleasure to talk with you today, and um, I'm looking forward to working with all of you. Thank you.